We're continuing our study of conics with the hyperbola. The hyperbola is created when you've got your two stacked cones, tip to tip, and you slice down through both the cones. And when that happens, when you slice, you get a hyperbola where it slices the two cones. Hyperbola have a center. They have vertices. And they have foci. The transverse axis is uh, what I also call the major axis, is the axis that goes through all those things, the center, the vertices, and the foci. The standard form of a hyperbola with its center at the origin is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. That is for this situation where the transverse axis is along the x-axis. Notice when it's along the x-axis that the x squared over a squared comes first. In the second picture, the transverse axis is along the y-axis. So that is this equation where the y squared over a squared comes first. And it does matter because there's subtraction in the middle. So you have to make sure that the, if it's along the x-axis, that the x squared comes first and then the a squared is on the bottom. And if it goes along the y-axis, then the y squared comes first. It doesn't necessarily, like with ellipse, the a squared does not have to be bigger than the b squared, okay? In order to find the foci, you would use the formula c squared equals a squared plus b squared. c is the distance from the center to the focus, a is the distance from the center to one of the vertices. And let's see. B, you're going to find, is created by making a box with A and B. And B is this distance here. And that box creates diagonal lines that help guide the hyperbola. You'll see that as we graph here in a minute. So here's some examples. You can see the difference between the ellipse and the hyperbola. With the ellipse, you have a plus in the middle. With the hyperbola, it's always minus. So example one says, find the vertices and locate the foci for the hyperbola with this equation. So, our first step is to identify the major axis or the transverse axis. Since X comes first, then that means the transverse axis is horizontal. So, A must be below the x squared, a squared is 25. So a is 5. Then we know that b squared is 16. So b would have to be 4. And this helps us find c. So c squared is a squared plus b squared. a squared was 25 and b squared was 16. So c would be the square root of 25 plus 16, which is the square root of 41 or 
6.4. And I'm not worrying about the plus or minus there, it's, but it will come into effect. So if we go back to the fact that A is 5, so if the center is at the origin, then your vertices will be to the left and the right of the origin. So their y coordinates will be 0. And we go 5 to the left, that gives us negative 5, 0. And 5 to the right, that gives us 5, 0. Then the foci back to C. Again, they're along the horizontal axis, the x-axis. So the y value is 0. And we've got negative 6.4 and positive 6.4. For example, too, it says write the standard form of the equation of a hyperbola with foci at 0, negative 5 and 0, 5 and vertices at 0, negative 3, 0, 3. Now, I like to start these by graphing. So it says that the vertices are at 0, negative 3, and 0, 3. And our foci are at, oh, excuse me, I did that the wrong way. 0, negative 3 on the y-axis, and 0, 3. And our foci are at 0, negative 5, and 0, 5. Obviously, our center is going to be at 0 for this particular problem. And so we can now find A. A's distance is from the zero to one of the vertices, so that would be three. So A is three, that means A squared is nine. To write our equation, we want, we've got a squared on the bottom minus b squared on the bottom of here equals 1. And what goes on the top? Well, since the transverse axis is vertical, then that means y squared goes on the top first, and then x squared over b squared. So, so far we've got y squared over 9. And we still need to find out what b squared is. Well, we know that c, the distance from the center to one of the foci, is 5. So c squared would be 25, and that's going to help us find b. b squared is c squared minus a squared. And by the way, you are not going to have to memorize, as far as I'm concerned, all these formulas for the different conics. You're going to be able to use your fact sheet on your tests. So B squared would be 25 minus 9. So B would be the square root of 16, which is 4. Or, backing up, b squared is 16. So, there's the equation that goes along with our hyperbola. We can finish graphing this just for the heck of it. It says that b would be 4. So, this distance here is what we're looking at. So I'm going to put a little dot here at 4 and at negative 4. And what's happening is with those two and the actual vertices, we're creating a box. And after we create that box, we get these lines here.
that go through the corners of our box. And they help guide us into graphing our hyperbola. So we wouldn't graph this hyperbola like this because we want it to come close to those lines. They're guiding us, telling us how wide or narrow the hyperbola should be. So they won't reach those lines, they won't touch them, but they'll come very close. So that's what that one looks like. Example three says determine the standard form of the equation of hyperbola with vertices at three zero and negative three zero and asymptotes, those are those lines, at plus or minus square root of three x. So the vertices are at negative three, zero, and three, zero. That tells us that A is three, or A squared is nine. It also tells us that the transverse axis is horizontal because the vertices are lying on the x-axis. Now, we can use, oh, let's start writing our equation. We will have, since the transverse axis is horizontal, then x squared goes on top. And we already know that a squared is nine. minus y squared over b squared equals one. So we need to find b. We can do that using our asymptotes. It says it's at plus or minus square root of three x. Now the formula for your asymptotes are plus or minus b over a x. So basically what we've got here is we've got b over a, which we know a, it's three, is equal to the square root of three. So b would be three times the square root of three, or approximately 5.2. B squared would be 3 square root of 3 squared, which is 9 times 3, or 27. So there's our equation. But let's go over here and let's graph a little bit. So B is at positive 5.2 and negative 5.2. That's not 5. There we go. And so our box is going to look like this. And our asymptotes then are here. And we don't have the foci, but that's okay. It didn't ask us to find it, I don't think. So that's fine. We can still graph this using our asymptotes as a guide, it would look something like this. And this is just detailing the different formulas for the equations, how to find the foci, vertices, and the asymptotes. So let's try to graph one. Here we've got x squared over 36 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. Since the x squared is coming first, that tells us that our transverse axis is horizontal. So that means that a squared is 36, so a must be 6. b squared is 9, 
So B must be 3. We can find C by plugging in, because we need to know the foci. So C squared would be A squared plus B squared. So C is the, where am I, square root of 45, and that is a C, by the way. Let's make that more obvious. It's not an E, which is approximately 6.71. It, since the center is at zero, zero, our vertices must be negative six, zero, and six, zero. And our foci then must be negative 6.720 zero, and positive 6.720. So let's go over here and graph these. So our vertices are at negative 6 and 6. Our foci are at negative 6.72 and 6.72 or 71, sorry. And then B was three. So that helps me make the box. That's what we need the B for. It's not a ver B, the Bs are, do not create a vertex. They're just helping us make our box. So there's two ways that we can identify our asymptotes. We can do it by looking at the graph or by using our formula. If we look at the graph here, we see from zero rise over run, that would be three over six or one half. So one of the asymptotes is y equals one half. The other one would be down three over six, negative one half x. Finding the asymptotes with the equ equation, you can do this either way. We would use plus or minus b over a times x. We said that b is 3 and a is 6. So that's what gives us y equals positive or negative one-half x. So our two asymptotes are y equals negative one-half x and y equals positive one-half x. And now we can finish graphing our hyperbola. So... Just from our vertices, we'll come out, use the asymptotes as a guide. I don't like that first one I drew. And when you're graphing these for me, make sure they look curved and make sure you're graphing the foci in addition to the rest of the graph. Now let's look at some of these guys that are the situation where the center is not at the origin. So, if the center is HK, then A is going to be the distance that's from the center to the vertex, to one of the vertex. So it would be, in this case, H plus A. 
and then k because the y value would be the same. Or going the other way, it would be h minus a k. For the foci, it would be h plus c k or h minus c k. And then B still makes the rest of the box. B would be, in this case, it would be H. And then K plus B would give you that point. or H K minus B to give you the other part. And then the asymptotes, here's the equation for that. I find it easiest to understand these by graphing them and then come back with the vertices and foci and asymptotes and everything rather than trying to figure out everything with the formulas. Of course, you're welcome to use the formulas, too, and we'll go both routes. Of course, your hyperbola could also have the transverse axis vertical, and this is the situation similar to the other one. So example five says graph and locate the foci for this hyperbola. So first off, the transverse axis Since x is on the top of the first fraction, then the transverse axis is horizontal. So a squared is 9, therefore a is 3. b squared is 7, so b is the square root of 7, or 2.65. We can find C using our formula. C squared is A squared plus B squared. So 9 plus 7. So C would be the square root of 16 or 4. Okay. So how are we going to figure these things out? Well, we also need to identify where is the center. The center is HK. And that is, move this around a bit. From the X minus 4 and the Y plus 3. So it's always the opposite. So since we have x minus 4, then the center is at positive 4. And y plus 3, the y coordinate is negative 3. So let's go take what we've found here and start graphing it. So we said the center is at 4, negative 3. We were told that a is 3, and that the transverse axis is horizontal. So we need to go 3 to the right of the center and 3 to the left of the center. That tells us our vertices. So our vertices are at 1, negative 3, and 7, negative 3. Now, we could use the formula, and I did that on your notes where I've written this down, if you want to look that up. But like I said, to me, it's just easier to go ahead and start graphing it and just identify the point instead of trying to figure out, well, it's H plus blah, 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 K and all that. Anyway, then it said that B was 2.65. So I'm going to put a little dot. 2.65 above the center and 2.65 below. 
And then the vertices, let's see, C is 4. Excuse me, the foci. Since C is 4, then we're going to go 4 to the right of the center and 4 to the left of the center. So that means our foci must be at negative, excuse me, 0, negative 3, and what is that? 8, negative 3. We also want to find the asymptotes. So let's go back and do that. To find the asymptotes, we're going to use the formula y minus k equals plus or minus. This is the one that goes with the transverse axis being horizontal. B over a times a x minus h. Why don't I just use the graph? I could. Let's look at that. This one's a little more difficult to use the graph because we've got a decimal there. But it's not so bad. So our asymptotes would look like this. So rise over run, we know we're rising, what was it, 2.65 and running 3. But it does make it a little bit hard to see where is it crossing the y-axis and all. So this one I do suggest using the formula for the asymptotes anyway. So we've got y minus k was negative 3, so we'll have plus 3 equals plus or minus B was 2.65 and A is 3. So we've got 2.65 or the square root of 7 over 3 and then times x minus h, which was 4. And then we just do some simplifying. So we've got y plus 3. Please, when you're doing your lab, do not leave it like this. This is a mess. We've got to solve for y. Okay, so y plus 3 equals plus or minus we can just change that to a decimal, 0.88x times x minus 4. Then we need to distribute the 0.88. There shouldn't be an x right there, just 0.88. So we'll have 0.88x minus, oh, we need to go back. Let's go ahead and rewrite these as two separate equations first. So we've got y plus 3 equals negative 0.88 times x minus 4. And we also have y plus 3 equals positive 0.88 times x minus 4. Now we distribute the 0.88. So we got negative 0.88 plus 3.53. And then subtract 3 from both sides to get y by itself, and we've got y equals negative 0.88x plus 0.53. And then the other equation, distribute the positive 0.88, and we get 0.88x minus 3.53. And then we subtract 3 from both sides, and we get positive 0.88x minus 6.53. Notice it, the y-intercepts will be different. So you can't just say plus or minus, blah, blah, blah. 
you have to solve them both separately, and I want you to do that on your lab. Make sure you've solved them both for y. So that gives us both of our asymptotes there. And now we can just go ahead and graph our hyperbola using our asymptotes as a guide. And, oh, let's see if I can make that a little bit better. Something like that. And please do fill up your graph when you're graphing these. But that's what it looks like. Okay. Now we can move forward and we're going to work several examples like this. This first one here needs us to start by putting this in standard form. So we've got a bit of a mess. We need to get it in standard form. And so first of all, we're going to take our X's and put them together. And I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 4. So we'd have 4 times x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave a space there. Close that off. Then we're going to group our y's together, and I'm going to pull out a negative 9. So minus 9 times y squared plus 10 y. And I'm going to leave a space there. And then I'm going to take the negative 153, add it to both sides, so we get 153 there. Okay. At this point, we need to figure out what goes here and here. Remember, when completing the square, that's what we're doing, then what goes in those spaces is... b over 2 squared. So in the first space, we've got 6 over 2 squared. That's 3 over 2, which is, excuse me, 6 over 2, that's 3 squared, which is 9. So 9. And then we have to add that over here. Only, there's a little bit more to it than that. So when we add over on the right, I know I've run out of space here. Then we're going to add 4 times whatever we put in that space. And then we're going to add negative 9 times whatever we put in the second space. Reason for that is because we pulled out the 9 and the 4 here we have to make sure we take that into account on the other side. So here goes our 9. And then for the y's, we've got 10 over 2 squared. So that's 5 squared, which is 25. We can simplify. x squared minus 6x plus 9 factors to be x minus 3 quantity squared. That's what we want. And y squared plus 10y plus 25 factors to be y plus 5 quantity squared. Then we've got 153 plus 4 times 9 plus negative 9 times 25. That gives us negative 36. Now, what do we do from this point? Now, we need our everything set up with division, and we need the right-hand side to be 1. So, to get negative 36 to be 1, we're going to need to divide by negative 36. So, we're dividing everything by negative 36. Doing that, we get negative x minus 3 squared 
4 over 36 is 1 ninth, so 9 on the bottom. Then we've got positive, because we've got a negative over a negative. y plus 5 squared. 9 over 36 is 1 fourth, so 4 on the bottom equals 1. Now, you'd like to say we're finished, but they're not quite, almost, but not quite. Reason being, we need the first thing that comes in our equation to be positive. So, we're going to just take these and flip-flop them. So, we have y plus 5 squared over 4 minus x minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. So it is a hyperbola because we started out positive and we've got the minus in the middle. Now we can go forward with graphing this thing. So let's start with the center. The center will be at negative 5, positive 3. Gosh, how many pages? Do I have here? Goodness. Negative 5, positive 3 is right. Oh, no, it's not. I think my Y came first. Oh, I've got way too many pages. Yeah, so that's not right. You see what I did? The X is here. So it's 3 negative 5. So, 1, 2, 3, negative 5, right there. Okay, next step is a squared is 4, so that means that a is 2. So we want to, let's see, let's identify our axis, our transverse axis is, since the Y comes first, vertical. So we're going to go two up and two down from our center. So that makes our vertices at 5, no, 3. We went up 2 from 5, so negative 3. And then down, we've got 3, and then when we went down 2, so negative 7. B squared is 9, so B must be at 3. So I'm going to go to the right and left 3. So one, two, to help make my box. So the box is going to look like this. And so the asymptotes are going to be something like this. Again, it's easier to find, oh, that's bad, the asymptotes here in a minute with the formula. Let's go back and we need to find the foci. And 
And to do that, we need C. So we've got C squared equals A squared plus B squared. A squared was 4. B squared was 9. So C will be the square root of 13 or approximately 3.61. So let's graph this. That'll make it easier to find our foci. So we're 3.61 to the right of the center and 3.61 to the left of the center. So the foci will be at, exact, the x values will still be 3, and then we've got A, let's see, oh, I did that wrong because the transverse axis is vertical. Sorry about that. So 3 up and 3 down. So about right there and right there. So from the center, we've got negative 5. So we need to subtract from negative 5 and add to negative 5. Let's do that with the formula this time. So the foci will be at 3 negative 5 minus 3.61 and 3 negative 5 plus 3.61. That gives us 3 negative 8.61 and 3 negative 1.39. And last, we need our asymptotes. So the asymptotes for a transverse axis that is vertical is y minus k equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h. So we'll plug in y minus k, which was three, um, five, negative 5, so plus 5 equals a was 2, b is 3, and then we have x minus h, and h was 3. And then we simplify. I forgot my plus minus here. So we've got y plus 5 equals negative two-thirds times x minus 3, or we've got y plus 5 equals positive two-thirds times x minus 3. Again, I want you to go through and solve these for y. So distribute the negative two-thirds. So we get negative two-thirds plus 2. Subtract y from both sides. So y is negative two-thirds x minus three. And then on the right, distribute the two-thirds. Got minus two. And then we add or subtract five to give us two-thirds x minus seven. So those are our asymptotes. And I'm going to write down our foci here real quick. Okay, and now we can graph it. Again, we're using our asymptotes as a guide, so this is a very wide hyperbola. There we go. 
Let's look at one more example. An application for us here. It says an explosion is recorded by two microphones that are two miles apart. Microphone M1 receives the sound three seconds before microphone M2. Assuming sound travels at 1,100 feet per second, determine the possible locations of the explosion relative to the location of the microphones. Okay, so we've got, we're going to put this centered at zero, zero, just to make it easy. And we need to see where our two explosions would be. or rather where our microphones are at. Our microphones are our foci, and they're two miles apart. Recall that one mile is, since we're in feet here, 5,280 feet. So if they're two miles apart and we're centered at zero, then we're going to go left 5,280 feet and right 5,280 feet, something like that. So those are our microphones. So now how are we going to find our vertices? Well, our vertices can be found using the fact that one microphone receives the sound three seconds before the other, and sound travels at 1,100 feet per second. So our difference is actually going to be three times 111, 1,100, or 3,300 feet. So that's the distance between our vertices. If, that's, if 3,300 is the distance between our two vertices and our center is at the origin, then A, 2A, would be 3,300, or A is 1,650. All that's saying is that we're going to go 1,650 to the left and 1,650 to the right. So something like that. There's our vertices. In order to determine the possible places for this explosion, we're going to write an equation that follows, a, that, that is a, the equation for a hyperbola. So we need, we've got A, we also need B. And we know that B can be found using the fact that C squared is A squared plus B squared. A squared was 1,650. What was C? Well, or A is 1,650, so A squared, there we go. B was the distance, or excuse me, C was the distance from here to here. And so that was 5,280.
And so B will be the square root of 5,280 squared minus 1,650 squared, which is approximately 5,015.6 feet. So what does this give us? It gives us the location for making our box. So a little over 5,000 feet would be about right here. So if we make our box now, and then it's going down somewhere, just doing the top half. Since it's centered at zero, then our asymptote's gonna go through Oh, I don't like that. Something like that. Therefore, our hyperbola looks something like this. What we're trying to find is the possible point for this explosion to have been. It says that microphone one hears the sound three seconds before microphone two. So if I make this one microphone one and this one microphone two, then our explosion has to be somewhere along our hyperbola closer to microphone one. Somewhere along here. We don't know exactly where, but to write our equation now, We can say the transverse axis was horizontal, so it'll be x squared over 1650 squared minus y squared over 5016.6 squared equals 1. Or x squared over this really big number. minus y squared over this really big number equals one. So since M1 here's first, we can then say that the explosion is somewhere on the right branch of the hyperbola. Doesn't tell us exactly, but at least it gives us an idea where to find it.